Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anachi Sasuke, and welcome to the first video of Holiday Week. I'm... It, I've just now realized I don't know what I'm going to call these things. Like, I don't know how I'm going to title them. But, this is a website that was given to me by my friend who told me a bunch of stuff about, um, about Hanukkah. I forgot to ask them why Hanukkah has two different spellings. I hope this website tells me, because I... I meant to ask that and completely forgot. So, okay, let's see now. The story of Hanukkah. Or, I don't know if the CH is supposed to be Hanukkah, because I've, I've seen people pronounce it like that. But I've also never known if they were serious or being, um, I think the word is facetious. I'm trying really hard not to use curse words right now, because that would be the easiest way to, anyway. Under Syrian rule, more than 2,000 years ago, there was a time when the land of Israel was part of the Syrian Greek Empire. Dominated by Syrian rulers of the dynasty of the Seleucids. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that 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 is like one sentence of stuff I already didn't know. And I guess that makes sense because in the in the previous I I learned my Christmas things from a Baptist school. I don't think they would have told me about Hanukkah anyway. I think the only knowledge of Hanukkah I had growing up was that there was a Rugrats Hanukkah special because that was just never a thing anyone talked about when I was a kid. In order to relate the story that led up to Hanukkah, why is why is there a link? Oh, eight day festival beginning on twenty five Kislev, celebrating the Maccabees' recapture of the Second Temple from the Syrian Greeks and its rededication, marked by the kindling of the lights on the menorah or uh, Hanukkah or Hanikia. So, are there two different pronunciations? Are there two different spellings of it? Because one of them is the actual word for the menorah. Then. Also, I think it's kind of funny that the uh, the footnote for the word Hanukkah would just be a, f a very, very brief, like, Reader's Digest version of the rest of the article. We start with Antiochus III, the king of Syria, who reigned from 222 to 186 BCE. He waged war with King Ptolemy of Egypt over the possession of the land of Israel. Antiochus III was victorious, and the land of Israel was annexed to his empire. At the beginning of, of his reign, he was favorably disposed towards the Jews and accorded them some privileges. Later on, however, when he was beaten by the Romans and compelled to pay heavy taxes, the burden fell upon the various peoples of his empire, who were forced to furnish the heavy gold that was required of him by the, the Romans. When Antiochus died, his son, Seleucus IV, took over and further oppressed the Jews. Okay. Added to the troubles from the outside were the grave perils that threatened uh, Judaism, or Judaism from within. The influence of the Hellenists, people who accepted idol worship and the Syrian way of life, was increasing. Y Yakanin, the high priest, let's see, the high priest or chief of Kohanim, only he may enter the Holy of Holies, foresaw the danger to Judaism from the penetration of Syrian Greek influences into the Holy Land. For, in contrast to the ideal of outward beauty held by the Greeks and Syrians, Judaism emphasizes truth and moral purity as commanded by wise. It is customary to insert a dash in God's name when written or printed on a medium that could be defaced. See also why don't you spell out God's name. So, did they write it on the website because the website can be defaced or in the Holy Torah? The five books of Moses, the overall body of Jewish religious teachings encompassing the whole body of Jewish law, tradition, and practice. I heard a different word for what the five books of Moses were called. I can't remember what the word was, but I didn't know that that's what the Torah was. The, how, how many paragraphs has it been? It's been a sentence and then two paragraphs, and I've already learned a lot of things. The Jewish people could never, could never give up their faith in God and accept the idol worship of the Syrians. Should I be pronouncing it as God, or should I not be pronouncing it as God? Yukonin was therefore opposed to any attempt on the part of the Jewish Hellenists to introduce Greek and Syrian customs into the land. The Hellenists hated him. One of them told the king's commissioner that in the treasury of the temple there was a great deal of wealth. The Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The wealth in the treasury consisted of the contributions of half a shekel, which is she what's a shekel? A silver coin of the biblical era, the standard monetary unit of the state of Israel, made by all adult Jews annually. That was given for the purpose of the sacrifices on the altar, as well as for fixing and improving the temple building. Another part of the treasury considered, consisted of orphans funds, which were deposited for them until they became of age. Well, that's nice. Seleucus, Seleucus, Seleucus needed money in order to pay the Romans. He sent his minister 
Heliodros? To take the money from the treasure of the temple. In vain did Yokanan, the high priest, beg him not to do it. Heliodros did not listen and entered the gate of the temple, but suddenly he became pale with fright. The next moment he fainted and fell to the ground. After he came to, he did not dare enter again. Okay, so he... They needed to pay the taxes to the Romans, so they went, Hey, you know what? There's a lot of money in the temple that can pay those taxes. Go, uh... Go get that temple money for the orphans and the sacrifices so we can pay the Romans. And the guy went to go do it, and then he passed out and was like, I don't... I'm not going to do that again, man. I'm not going back in there. The Madman Antiochus. A short time later, Seleucus was killed and his brother Antiochus IV began to reign over Syria. He was a tyrant of a rash and impetuous nature, contemptuous of religion and the, of the, other, the feelings of others. He was called Epiphanes, meaning the God's Beloved. Wait, so... If... If I'm pronouncing that right, I can... I, I now wonder if that has anything to do with that Three Kings Day epiphany thing? I kind of doubt it because Christianity did that one. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate any further than that. Several of the Syrian rulers received similar titles, but a historian of his time, Polybius, 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 gave him the epithet Epimanes, Madman, a title more suitable to the character of this harsh and cruel king. Desiring to unify his kingdom through a medium of a common religion and culture, Antiochus tried to root out the individualism of the Jews by suppressing all the Jewish laws. He removed the righteous high priest Yochanan, or Yochanan, Yochanan, from the temple in Jerusalem, the holiest city, capital of Israel, the site of the Holy Temple. And in his place installed Yochanan's brother Joshua, who loved to call himself by the Greek name of Jason. For he was a member of the Hellenist party, and he used his high office to spread more and more of the Greek customs among the priesthood. Joshua, or Jason, was later replaced by another man, Menelaus, who had promised the king that he would bring in more money than Jason did. That's not a, that's not a good reason to, to run a temple. When Yukonin, the former high priest, protested against the spread of the Hellenist influence in the Holy Temple, the ruling high priest hired murderers to assassinate him. I mean, I guess that is what an assassination is, if you don't want to split hairs about it. Antiochus was at that time engaged in a successful war against Egypt, but messengers from Rome arrived and commanded him to stop the war, and he had to yield. That's alright. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, a rumor spread that a serious accident had befallen Antiochus. Thinking that he was dead, the people rebelled against Menelaus. The treacherous high priest fled together with his friends. The martyrs. Okay. Antiochus returned from Egypt, enraged by Roman interference with his ambitions. When he heard what had taken place in Jerusalem, he ordered his army to fall upon the Jews. Thousands were killed. Antiochus then enacted a series of harsh decrees against the Jews. Jewish worship was forbidden. The scrolls of the law were confiscated and burned. The Sabbath, the divinely ordained day of rest on the seventh day of the week. Is that Saturday? I've always seen it considered to be Sunday, but if you look at the calendar, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Saturday. Uh, Sabbath rest, circumcision, and the dietary laws are prohibited under penalty of death. How would... How do you put somebody on penalty of death for circumcision? Were they checking? Why were they checking? Even one of the respected elders of that generation, Rabbi... Uh, Eliezer, a man of 90, was ordered by the servants of Antiochus to eat pork so that others would do the same. Who was he? Um, a Mishnaic sage studied under Rabbi Johanan ben Zakai, who compared his memory to a cemented pit which loses not one drop of water. Married the daughter of the uh, Nesai, Rabbi Simeon ben Gamaliel I, established an academy in Lod, or and authored the mid Rashic work. Uh, Pierre de Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer, teaching of Rabbi Akiba, teacher of Rabbi Akiba, was embroiled in a halachic dispute with the sages of his generation, and was excommunicated when he refused to accept the majority opinion. Also, a common Jewish first name. So when he refused, when he refused, they suggested to him that he pick pick up the meat to his lips to appear to be eating, but he refused to even do that and was put to death. There were thousands of others who likewise sacrificed their lives. The famous story of Hannah and her seven children happened at that time. And this spells her name C-H-A-N-A-H. -H. So that could just be that Hanukkah is spelled like that by people who were not 
Jewish? I don't know. I really gotta ask somebody about that. Antiochus's men went from town to town and from village to village to force the inhabitants to worship pagan gods. But where did pagan come from? I thought they were worshipping Hellenist and Roman things. Where did pagan come from? Only one refugee or refuge area remained, and that was the hills of Judea with their caves. But even there did the Syrians pursue the faithful Jews, and a many and many a Jew died a martyr's death. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Mat Matit Yahu. One day, the henchmen of Ant Antiochus arrived in the village of Moduin, where that the old pr oh, it's a person. The old priest lived. The Syrian officer built an altar in the marketplace of the village and demanded that he offer sacrifice to the Greek gods. He replied, I, my sons and my brothers, are determined to remain loyal to the covenant with which our god made with our ancestors. Thereupon, a Hellenistic Jew approached the altar to offer a sacrifice. He grabbed his sword and killed him, and his sons and friends fell upon the Syrian officers and men. They killed many of them and chased the rest away, then destroyed the altar. He knew that Antiochus would be enraged when he heard what had happened. He would certainly send an expedition to punish him and his followers. Um, Matit Yahu therefore left the village of Moduin and fled together with his sons and friends to the hills of Judea. All loyal and courageous Jews followed them. They formed legions and from time to time they left their hiding places to fall upon enemy detachments and outposts and to destroy their pagan altars that were built by order of Antiochus. The Maccabees. The Jewish army that revolted against the Syrian Greek occupation in 139 BCE, whose miraculous victory culminated in the festival of Hanukkah. Their name is an acronym of their battle cry, whose Hebrew words mean, Who is likened upon you against all powers, O God. I've heard the word Maccabee a lot, but I've never heard that that's what it was. And I feel like I should have known that by now. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not Jewish, but I honestly feel like I should have known that by now, and I feel cheated that I didn't. Before his death, uh, Matit Yahu called his sons together and urged them to continue the fight in defense of God's Torah. Oh, there's no dash. When he asked them to follow the counsel of of their brother, uh, Shimon, the second son of Jacob and Leah, second of the twelve tribes. He and his brother Levi destroyed the city of Shechem in retaliation for their sister Dinah's abduction and violation, a common Jewish name. Did all of this really happen that close to Jacob? Well, I mean, if it's the second son, I think they were still living hundreds of years back then. Hmm. In waging warfare, he said, he said, the le their leader should be Judah the Strong. Who's Judah? Well, for A, the fourth son of Jacob and Leah, fourth of the twelve tribes. Oh, okay. Judah was called Maccabee, a word composed of the le the initial letters of the four Hebrew words uh, Mi, Kamosha, ba uh, Baalim, Hashem, who is like you, O God. Oh, Hashem is the name God, okay. Antiochus sent his general Apollonius, I've heard that name before, to wipe out Judah and his followers, the Maccabees. Though greater in number and equipment than their adversaries, the Syrians were defeated by the Maccabees. Antiochus sent out another expedition, which was also defeated. He realized that only by sending a powerful army could he hope to defeat Judah and his brave fighting men. Doesn't sound like that worked. An army consisting of more than 40,000 men swept the land under the leadership of two commanders, uh, Nicanor, or Nicanor and Gorgiash. When Judah and his brothers heard of that, they exclaimed, Let us fight unto death in defense of our souls and our temple. The people assembled in Mitzpah. Is that where Bar Mitzvah comes from? Hmm. Huh. I wonder... I wonder why. I wonder if that's explained here. Uh, where Samuel, the prophet of old, had offered prayers to God. After a series of battles, the war was won. The dedication. Now the Maccabees returned to Jerusalem to liberate it. They entered the temple and cleared it of the idols placed there by the Syrian vandals. Judah and his followers built a new altar, which he dedicated on the 25th of the month of Kislev, which is when... Oh, December, November to December. So is it November the 25th? In the year 3622, which is 139 BCE. Since the golden menorah had been stolen by the Syrians, the Maccabees now made one of a cheaper metal. When they wanted to light it, they found only a small cruise of pure olive oil bearing the seal of the high priest Yochanan. Or Yochanan. It was sufficient to light only uh, for one day. By a miracle of God, it continued to burn for eight days till new oil was made available. That miracle proved that God had again taken his people under his protection. In memory of this, our sages appointed these eight days for annual thanksgiving and for lighting candles. Let's see, menorah. 
The seven branch gold candelabra in the temple, the eight branch menorah candelabra, kindled on Hanukkah commemorating the miracle of Hanukkah. After Hanukkah, the brightness of the first Hanukkah light had dwindled down, but the holy fires on the altar burnt again in the the Beit Hamikdash, the holy temple, from morning to morning as prescribed by the law. The priests were again busily officiating in the old customary ways, and day in, day out, they prepared the offerings. Order and peace seemed established. That word seemed is a bit ominous. The Jewish farmer longed to return to his land after two years of hardship, privation, and danger to in the victorious Jewish army. It was high time to break the ground and to till the soil if, there, if the barley was to grow and ripen in time for the Omer offering on Passover. Seven-day festival dates in the diaspora, beginning on 15 Nisan, Nisan, commemorating the exodus from Egypt, the sacrifice offered on the eve of that holiday during temple times. The Jewish farmers had left their plows to rally about the heroic Chashmonaim. The first victories had drawn even the hesitant into the ranks of the enthusiastic Jewish rebels led by the sons of Mashit Yahu. Farmers had forsaken their land, merchants and tradesmen, their shops and stores and shops. Even Torah students had emerged from the four walls of the Bet Ham Hamidrash to join the fight against the oppressors. But the songs of victory, which had filled the reclaimed holy temple with praise and gratitude for the merciful God, had ceased. The goal of the battle seemed reach, and the Torah again was supreme law in Israel. One man, though, realized that the time for a return to normal living had not yet come. Israel could not yet afford to relax, it would have to stand ready and prepare to carry on the fight against the overwhelming odds of the enemy. This man was Judah Maccabee. His name was upon everyone's lips and in every Jewish heart. He was admired as a hero and as a man with the heart of a lion and the simple piety of a child. As the one whose mighty armies fought and conquered, yet never failed to pray to God, the master of all battles, before he entered the fray. It was not the spirited warrior's joy that made Judah Maccabee stay in camp. His heart, too, longed to return to his former peaceful life, to Moduin, the quiet town of priests, which held the grave of his adored father. Bloodshed and battle meant a hard and unwanted profession for the men of Judea, who preferred peace to strife. Yet this was no time for relenting. Not only had he to stay, but with all the persuasion of his magnetic personality, he had to hold back his comrades at arms. His own reasoning and his two wise brothers, Shimon and Yonatan, Yonatan, the son of Saul and sworn friend of David, helped David escape Saul's designs on his life, led the Israelite rebellion against the Philistines, and was killed in battle together with his father. Told him that only the first phase of the War of Liberation had passed. Hard and desperate times were yet to come. Clever enemies merely needed an extended lull to prepare new assaults with more troops and better equipment. And there were enemies all about Judea, besides the defeated Syrians. The neighboring countries begrudged the dazzling victories of the small Jewish armies. They would much rather have seen the people of Judea oppressed and humiliated than armed and spirited, a threat to their own lands. Whence had come the sudden source of strength, courage, and fortitude? What was there in this nation that made history in proud seclusion and isolation from other nations? Old hatred was revived. The descendants of Edom, the... the... Idumeans? Idumeans? The Ammonites, the Philistines, and Phoenicians, they all revived their ancient jealousies. Another name for Esau, called so because he sold his birthright in exchange for a red stew. This... this is... They really decided to just hate the Jews over them rising up and not being oppressed anymore? Wow. Messengers arrived from Gilead. The pagan people joined forces to destroy Judea. From Galilee came the bad news of similar evil intentions and active preparations in uh, Ptolemais, Ptolemais, Tyre, and Zidon. 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 The messengers found Judah Maccabee already at work. Fortifications had to be thrown up around Zion. Towers, wa walls, battlements, and moat had to be constructed opposite the fort, still held by their worst enemies, the Hellenistic Jews, under the leadership of the false priest Menela Menelaus. I thought he was dead already! These hated everything Jewish and lived in the hope of the return of the Syrian masters. Judah Maccabee prepared Jerusalem against them and against an imminent assault by the troops of Antiochus. Under his supervision, the Jewish people worked feverishly to refill their arsenals and turn the whole country into a stronghold. Once this most important task was accomplished, Judah Maccabee led his freshly trained troops to the aid of the regions and villages harassed by the spiteful neighbors of Judea. He drove the 
Edomines from Hebron, which they had annexed, and he punished the people who had acted with hostility towards the Jewish settlers. Then he led his army across the Jordan River against the Am Ammonites. Their capital fell before the furious onslaught of the Jewish troops, and so did their fortress. Yesir. Or yes, ye Yesir? Quiet cell phone. Judah's brother, Shimon, led an army north to, to aid the plagued Jews of Galilee. He defeated the enemy and cleared the Jewish land. At his urging, a great many of the Jewish settlers who had fled to Jerusalem re uh, returned to rebuild in safety what had been destroyed during the years of weakness. Judah Maccabee and Yonatan joined forces and marched against Gilead, where they were met with the toughest resistance. By Shavuot, this campaign was successfully concluded. The one-day holiday too in the diaspora, commemorating the gift of the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. This late spring holiday commences the 50th day, the morrow of seven weeks, followed by the second day of Passover. Judea was again free, and all parts captured by the neighboring nation had been recovered. Celebrations and festivity transformed Jerusalem and the Holy Temple, hardly half a year after the victories over the Syrian armies. The Jewish people expressed their joy and gratitude to God in the form of psalms and offerings, for he had restored glory and liberty to the Jewish land. And this is excerpted, or ex, excerpted from the completed story of Hanukkah by Dr. Nisan Mindel, published by Kehot, or Kehot. And it looks like the complete story is actually on this website as well. So I will put a link in the description to this website if you want to check that out. So more in this, this section, there's the story of Yeduit, or Yehudit, uh, Hannah and her seven sons, the miracle of the Maccabees, the Maccabees Jewish freedom fighters. I'm not going to read the comments because I don't want to really like do that to myself. Let's see, learning and values, diving into the text, the teachings of the Torah and the rabbis. Okay. It's a lot of interesting information on this website. So I will definitely be putting a link in the description to this website if you want to check out these things and also the information. Because it'll take me a long time to go through all of this if I was going to do that. And since I'm just covering this this one day. Let's see, community and family. Stuff for parenting, the Jewish woman, relationships, kosher cooking, health and wellness, jewishkids.org, Jewish life, Je the Jewish woman again, the Jewish kids again. Jewish news, Jewish news, and inspiration and entertainment. Jewish tales from the past, Jewish music, contemporary voices, daily doses of wisdom, blogs, art and poetry, and videos. There's some do-it-yourself stuff in here. So, I was kind of expected to be talking about things like, like the dreidels and all that. But I think I feel better about the fact that I learned the backstory of where Hanukkah came from and why than, like, the dreidels. My friend did explain the dreidels to me, but as I said, I didn't pull that information aside for this video. Well, I didn't say that. I said that in my previous update video that I deleted. But I, I didn't pull aside that conversation where they gave me the information about what the dreidel was and why it was happening. But I do feel good about having just learned that particular story that I just read, because... For the different kinds of schools I've been to, I was never going to learn that unless I sought it out myself. That being said, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This was the first day of holiday week where we looked at Hanukkah. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be reading a Charles Dickens story about haunted houses that came out on Christmas and might not actually be very Christmassy. But it says Christmas Day right at the top and it sounded interesting, so I grabbed that. If you liked it, a like and subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you need to do either one of those things. Um... And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.